That's awesome. Well, Steve, um, I would love to kind of let you do your own intro. Just kind of tell everybody a little bit about who you are and, and about your company. Sure. Um, I, I've been running tournaments since about 1997. Uh, I started my current company, um, soccer management company in 2014. Uh, I had one event. Uh, it was in Sarasota and it was the only thing I had. We currently are up to uh, 48 events in 15 states. Um, we are the largest tournament, soccer tournament, new soccer tournament company in the country uh, with regards to um, a, a number of events. And we, we, you know, every year we've been in operation, uh, our numbers have gone up with regards to the number of teams. So um, that, that's kind of, I have a staff of five guys. Uh, we do nothing but soccer tournaments from nine to five. I have a few part-timers that help me out. And uh, we just go event to event to event each weekend and really enjoy what we do. Yes, it shows. I've, I've got to witness some of their energy and they're just a great group of like-minded people who love what they do. So it's pretty, pretty awesome. All right. Well, so today we're going to just kind of ask a few questions to kind of see how you're navigating through COVID and um, just everything going on in the world right now. You as I witnessed this past weekend, just like knowing how many teams were at your tournament, you definitely seem to, you know, still be attracting those teams and pulling off these tournaments, which um, I can't say the same for every organization. A lot of people are struggling. And so you kind of have some magic ingredients, some of which I know, and, and we can discuss, but what I would love to ask, the first question would be, what challenges have you faced during COVID as a company? Well, you know, I think a lot of people have that, that are that are kind of have one foot in the door in this thing have been finding ways to not make things happen. They've been finding ways to cancel, finding ways to think, you know, went on the went on this, you know, when in doubt, err on the side of caution and cancel or don't go through. We've mm -hmm. been the complete opposite. We are trying to find every way possible to make it happen. We are trying to push uh, uh, groups through. We are trying to, and we're trying to do it responsibly. Um, mm -hmm. we, we've done things like uh, we, we've set up Bill Phillips, who you've met, uh, through our, as a COVID coordinator and, and at events. And he answers all things COVID, all of our standards, our policies, everything that we do, um, because we want to ensure people that we are taking the right steps. We've mm -hmm. taken limitations on things like limiting number of spectators. We've actually had an event where we had no spectators. Drop your kid off with your coach and come back and get them after the game. Um, we've, we've worked hard to follow local uh, uh, government guidelines and CDC guidelines. We've created graphics and different things to, to uh, ensure people were doing the right things. We've added it to our maps. We've added it to our schedules. Um, and, and then we've, we've been listening extremely close to, uh, you know, with the governors for each different state that we're in, um, as to what their guidelines are and what they're doing and, and, and how they're interpreting, you know, their restraints and constraints that we've had. Mm -hmm. So, you know, those being, a, being on the cutting edge of, of information has been key during this time frame because it's as you know, it's changed on a regular basis. It's changed sometimes hourly um, yep. uh, to each thing. So we've tried to comply. Um, and, and you know, I know in the housing industry, hotels have had to work very hard to stay open. And, and we've worked very hard to stay open as well. Right. Well, you just, you just answered five of my questions. <laughs> one of the things I was most interested in, and you just touched on it was, you know, you have, you have states that you have events in so many different states. And my, my question was like, how do you stay on top of that and manage that? And what I think I just heard you say is like, you actually have someone appointed as your COVID coordinator and you're all just very diligently, you know, um, listening and making sure that you are up to date so that you can follow through with the events in you know, to the best of the guidelines of what that state is asking. Yeah, and, and let's be honest, you know, some of these states don't care. I hate to say it that way, but, you know, you have your red states and your blue states and you've got this political game going on and 
and and it depends on where you are with regards to uh, um, like, for instance, I'm down in Texas and mm -hmm. for the most part, Texans are allowing everything to happen. Mm -hmm. um, they are, the local governments down there are, are saying no limits on spectators, but everyone has to wear a mask on at the park facility. Okay, easy enough. And right. then we actually have people that we've hired to run around as crowd busters and they tell people to spread out and tell people to put on your mask. Okay. And we do it politely. That, that's, um, this is all new stuff that I'm hearing. Like, you know, we talk to a lot of different tournament directors and um, I think everybody does a really good job of trying to follow what their local government is asking and, and whatnot. But I, uh, you definitely have, have taken it very seriously just by the pointers that you're giving right now. Um, I haven't heard anybody go as far above and beyond to make sure that, I mean, I think we all wanna say we're protecting people and following those those guidelines, but this is, yeah, that's that's new information and that's really good good advice. Um, hey Steve, yeah. I have a question for you about, sure. about that. But I would like to it. say, I feel like you go above and beyond on every. <laughs> Thank you, you try. Go ahead. Sorry. Steve, I have a question for you about the, the controlling of the crowds piece of it that you mentioned. I know some people in certain areas are having to um, I work within the confines of um, a certain amount of people being allowed at the fields and at the premises. I don't know if you've had to deal with that. And if you have, how, how have you dealt with that? Have you put up fences or snow fencing? Do you have somebody at a gate with a, a clicker counting how many people have come through um, or have you not experienced that at all yet? Um, well, in the areas that we're in, um, you know, we're not in the Northeast, so, which I think we're soon going to be, but in the Northeast, it's, it's obviously the population is, is much more dense, but mm -hmm. in the areas that we're in, we're, we're fairly spread out. But having said that we have had, we start off by saying things like, please leave your grandparents and siblings at home. Um, and, and mm -hmm. they're unnecessary people, uh, unfortunately although they're very necessary for the child and, and, and seeing games and life in general, but they're not necessary to get this tournament off the ground. So please leave your parent, your, your grandparents and siblings at home. We also, you know, saying one spectator per, per player is, is huge, but we have had situations where we actually drive around in our golf cart and we tell people, um, you need to space out. You need to spread out and move around and please practice safe social distancing. We actually, uh, printed up about uh, 200 signs um, that we take around with us to each event and we put them on the, you know, with practice safe social distancing and wear a mask and sanitize often. And we put those all over the park. Um, it, it almost looks like a, a, an election sign competition <laughs> on the side of the road with everything that we're putting up, but we want to make sure people get the message. Right. Sure. I think that's, it's really important, obviously, that you're saying the same message and that they're seeing it multiple times. Um, I know from in speaking with you about some of the other tournaments, you're, you're also doing other things like the awards and medal ceremonies differently. Can you um, elaborate a little bit on how you're you're approaching that part of it um, for some other tournament directors that are on the call that are trying to navigate that piece of it? Well, we have eliminated award ceremonies altogether. Um, we pre-bag our stuff. We leave them individually wrapped. Um, so that they're not handled and uh, we label them and we say when the when the event is over um, we would like for you to send one representative to come get your medals and if you want to give your medals out please go to a, a remote to, you know location away from uh, the event or, or at the event where nobody is or give them out of practice on the following week and in addition we've tried to find other ways to uh, um, identify, reward teams with recognition by we, we do graphics that we put on social media about the champions and finalists. Um, mm -hmm. We ask teams to send us their photos of their, their own team posing with their awards. Um, and we try and post these things and, and we try and send out an email afterwards saying congratulations to the following teams and we send it out. So we're trying to do other things to recognize these kids for their fantastic efforts. Yeah. I have a question. Have you seen with, as far as registrations go, have you seen like 
a decline? Have you seen it improve or have you seen like more last minute res registrations for events? Um, I know we have a lot of different variables that come into play and it's all over the board as far as on the housing end goes. We see a lot of different things. So I'm wondering what you're seeing. Uh, yes, yes, and yes. Uh, mm -hmm. we, have, we have teams registering late. Uh, we have been pushing for years to try and get teams to register earlier, mm -hmm. early registration deadlines, discounts, different things. And it's kind of uh, taken a couple of notches or steps down based on uh, COVID. But um, our numbers have actually gone up. Mm -hmm. And uh, the reason being is while other groups have been less willing to take a risk or felt it's not a safe environment to do so, we push forward. And as I said before, our uh, MO has been to uh, how can we make this work rather than finding ways to shut it down? We want to stay positive and keep pushing forward. Um, I have friends in California who I honestly think there's going to be a major problem with the way California shut down for these kids, um, not being able to get out socially and do things. I mean, these kids are suffering. Uh, and I know it's been in other areas as well. That's just an example. But um, so, so our numbers have been rising and to give you an example, we had uh, a tournament in Utah last July. Everything was still kind of hot, but uh, Park City Extreme Cup, which is one of the largest tournaments, I think it's the largest tournament in Utah, mm -hmm. canceled. It's a 500 team tournament. The next week I got 200 applications um, for my tournament, which was down in uh, um, Orem, Utah, which was still, a, a, according to their local government, everything was fine. Uh, we were able to play. And so we went from 120 teams to 280 in a matter of uh, 10 days. Wow. So we've, we've seen a lot of that type stuff happen to us where other groups cancel and, and we reap the benefits. Yeah, I know on the hotel side, because we have um, a few hotel partners on with us, it, it's hard because, you know, they're so used to having deadlines and, and reservation cutoffs that are a little more um, with a little more grace period and now what I'm seeing is I mean some events we're taking it right till week before and still asking for those blocks to be open because it does seem to there does there is a pattern or seems to be a pattern that a lot of people are just registering last minute probably waiting to see if it's actually going to go off yes. and whatnot so I, I understand the stress that that puts on the hotels because it's just completely different. But just like you're being flexible, you know, we're all learning this new norm of how to actually conduct business in a time when a lot of people aren't conducting business, right? They're just canceling and walking away. So I think you gave some really good advice that it's the consistency that you're not going to cancel. You're going to figure out how to do it. And then your the people coming start to know that as well. Like these turn this series is going to go off. If it can go off, it's going off. Um, so I like that advice a lot. Um, and to the hotel people on this call, you know, we, we're all in it together. We all suffer through the same thing. So we appreciate, you know, the work that you give us and being flexible. And at the same time, it's like what we need in order to get the business in, in your hotels, in these events and, and, you know, have everything just go off. So I just wanted to make mention of it because it is, it is a little stressful, I think. <laughs> I think you know, it's so really important. Go ahead, Steve. Yeah. Sometimes some of our competition is not necessarily soccer or other sporting events. Sometimes our competition is like a convention. You know, they're, they're trying to get all the hotels from us. In Sarasota this past weekend, our, our competition was a rowing event. Um, but what we're finding is a lot of these groups that are like indoor events, like a, like a convention, that have to pack a lot of people in. And we've all been to those monstrous conventions in Chicago and everywhere else. They're canceling. Mm -hmm. And so we're actually finding that hotels are um, reaching out to us more because we are last minute and right. we are a month ahead. Once we accept teams a month ahead, more and more groups are accepting, are, are then starting to book their hotel rooms right after that. So, right. you know, three, three weeks out, we could be sending, and we did it at, a, at the Sarasota Cup. We were mm -hmm. four weeks out and we sent 20 teams to four hotels. Um, and, and that'll, that'll fill them. That'll fill those blocks. 
That's right. Yeah, so it can be an advantage as well that things are last minute. I mean, we've seen that as well, right? We're, we're used to a life cycle of, you know, a good six months to a year on events. And now we're, we're getting them two weeks before an event. And, and just as you said, like filling them. So it, it's just, it's really just rolling with what it is and doing the best to utilize all of our experience and services to, you know, kind of please everybody involved. So and Steve, I wanted to make mention of the approach that you've taken with registrations this year. I think it's really important and I think it's been super effective through all of this and kind of your like book with confidence approach. Do you want to elaborate on that at all for some of our other tournament directors that are still in, maybe in the Northeast and in these hot areas that are, um, you know, seeing people wait to register until they see what's going to happen? Well, first off, we, 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 you're right. We do tell teams that, you know, register now, pay later. Um, so as, as we get closer, we can see exactly what's happened or give them more information. But in addition, um, Laura, we, we've had, uh, out of all of our events, and we do, you know, 40 plus in, in 15 states, we've had tons of teams drop out due to COVID. Um, you know, we had, a, we had a, one player's been exposed, the whole team's been exposed, we need to pull out. I, I would say it's been a, you know, two, 300 teams over the past six months that have pulled out of our events. And we have given 100% refund to them, uh, not even kept any admin charges or anything. We also offer them 100% credit to another event first. Um, and, and so a lot of them will actually say, hey, I know I'll take the credit and uh, we'll go sign up for something else when we're healthy. So that's been, giving them options has been key because right, right now, a lot of things during COVID have just been slammed down people's throats uh, without, without request, so to speak. Mm -hmm. sure. Yeah, I think that's important, especially for, you know, keeping teams wanting to come back to different tournaments that you're hosting or the same tournament year over year and, and making sure that they know that, hey, if, if our team has to quarantine and can't come, that they do have options. So I think it's, I think it's important. And I think it's important for them to know up front too, so that you can try and make plans uh, early on as it relates to field space and referees and, and everything that goes around, you know, surrounding an event. Yep. Yep. Has, um, go ahead. Sorry, Sam. You go. Okay. I was going to ask if, if, um, you know, navigating through this, we've heard from a lot of our tournament directors that they've been forced to kind of seek out new areas, uh, whether it be because they're more open or, you know, rinks were shut down or field space couldn't, wouldn't be striped in time or, you know, whatever the reasons are. Um, a lot of our tournament directors have been kind of forced to seek out new locations. Has that, has that happened to you or has, if it's not forced, have you been able to move into new areas that you hadn't been previously because of other, other fall offs? Um, I found, well, a couple of things. Number one, we, we, we've kept a lot of our same facilities, but I think some things have opened up for us because again, some people aren't willing to take that risk or, um, or, or they're not ready. And, and so we've jumped into some spots where we weren't previously. Now we've also had a lot of people. I've turned down probably eight new tournaments in the past two weeks. Um, I have everybody reaching out to me because now they need money and they want to do a fundraiser and they want to do things. And uh, they're, they've been hurting. A lot of these clubs are hurting uh, and they are looking for an, an avenue or something. I, I honestly believe that in the next six months, we're going to have like a cannon effect of, of work because, you know, as we come out of this thing and everyone's vaccinated and, uh, we, you know, we get that herd mentality type thing going, it, it's, I think it's going to explode and people are tired of being cooped up. Um, so, it, you know, for us, it's helped out and we're, we're looking to push forward. Uh, we just signed two new events in Arizona. We just signed um, a, a new event in Las Vegas, and we're just now about to sign a new event in Colorado. That's awesome. That's great. Wow. Are there any things that you will take away from COVID that you will keep implemented in your business? Any Anything positive that's come out of it that has kind of changed the way you do things and that you for the better well the, the one thing i'll say is that it's you have no choice in a desperate world but to be customer service oriented 
And I think the days of the customer is always right are, are a dying dead breed thing. Um, but there is a way to make sure that your customer feels listened to. There's a way to help them feel like they're a part of the solution. If there's a problem, I think there's a way to talk to them and include them in the process uh, without giving them the power or control of, of the decision-making. And how you handle each customer, to me, is, is very important. Um, you know, I have a guy who, who we canceled due to bad weather down in Louisiana. and I'm sorry, down in uh, Foley, Alabama. And he was crazed angry at me. And I took the time to call him and talk. And we had about three or four different phone conversations. And I talked the guy off the ledge. And, and, but he wasn't a coach or a manager. I just didn't want to go away with a bad feeling mm -hmm. and wanted to explain our side of things. But those are the type of things that, I mean, in, th in this type of day and age, you have to be attentive. You can't just, you know, here's my widget, go buy it type thing. Right. Um, you've got to go out and, and, and talk to people. Love that. So that's one thing I'll take with me. The, well, the other I, side I is, awesome. is, well, good. The other thing is we've had to stretch ourselves. Um, this has been hard. This has been a lot more work than we're used to doing. And we have to put more time, effort, and attention on everything that we do so that we're not coming across in a negative way. So it, it's super important that you think things through and, and, and do the job right. Um, my dad he used to always tell me, if you're not going to do the job right, don't do it at all. And, uh, um, you know, I, I, I'll never forget it. And I, I apply it to business today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's one thing that I've taken away from all of the conversations we've had from you and, and that I really value and respect is that you do take the time and the relationship is very, very important to you. And, and as you said, you know, this person wasn't a coach, they weren't a team manager, but it's important to you that they fully understand and, and have a, a good thought about your business or you as a person, like you take the time to establish the connection and um, really dig in deep to understand what customer service means more than just saying you have good customer service. I think you, you completely model it. So um, that is probably my favorite thing about you and your company um, from a outsider looking in. I love that you really value that um, because we also value that, right? And it means a lot more than just saying it. So um, that's where I was going to say you're completely awesome with that. Well, thank you. Um, so I have a fun fact and it, with a question. So my fun fact is, and, and you had said it at the beginning of the call, that you have a driver and he literally drives you from state to state to, you know, plan these events and go to the events. And you kind of sit and I think you sit in the back seat and work. That's my vision of it. That's kind of what I saw. <laughs> so is, is this new for COVID? Is this something completely new or is this what you've always done? Well, no, the, the driver, his name is Mark. And uh, Mark, uh, you know, we, we always joke about the, the movie, The Transporter with Jason Stratton. And, and Mark is the transporter. He kind of looks like him, He's, you know, bald and tough and mean. And, and, and uh, but anyway, Mark was a U.S. Airways pilot for 22 years and he can't hear very well. So, um, you know, and, and he, his contribution to tournaments is uh, he just wants to sit in the cockpit and go. And mm -hmm. he, he, we, we're on our way to Lincoln, Nebraska, and he just, it's a 19 hour trip from v Richmond, Virginia. And he has sat in the cockpit all but, but uh, two hours of it. And um, so he just sits over there. He has a couple demands that I, that I adhere to. One of them is, is proper coffee stops. <laughs> and, uh, and, and then the second thing is, is he needs to be fed by certain times or he gets evil. Um, <laughs> but, but other than that, the guy is a camel in the desert. Uh, he will go forever. He does whatever he needs. And he actually gets mad if I try and get behind the wheel because he knows that I've got things to do. And, mm -hmm. and he, he always chokes around and says, get that laptop open, get that laptop open and uh, mm -hmm. starts yelling at me while we're driving. So he understands his role and he, he's actually a very good friend. We, 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 you know, we have children the same age and his daughter and my daughter are best friends, but, uh, mm -hmm. and, and he loves, he just loves soccer beyond belief. Yep. He's a good player, good player back in the day. And, and, uh, and, and his name was wheels. So he was fast. Not Only so much city. now. 
<laughs> uh, he's still fast, just fast at driving, right? <laughs> he's fast at eating and running his mouth right now. But um, <laughs> other than that, you know, I mean, no, it's nice to have a driver and, and a guy that you can trust that, that is, is always going to be there. And, and that's, that's one of my biggest traits I look for in an employee is, is, is loyalty and trust. And uh, he's definitely hit, he's been with me the longest of anybody I've had. Wow. Pretty cool. It allows you to be able to do what you need to do and focus on, you know, your business while you're traveling. Cause you do travel so much, as you said, you have 48 events in 15 States that that's a lot of travel. So I just thought you know, that was cool. It, I, I think he needs it. Honestly, after being a pilot for 22 years and you're bouncing around from city to city to city, you stay in one place too long, he starts getting antsy. Yeah. And, and I'm the same way. I was a military brat and, and uh, I, I moved around from city to city. I think we both have that common love of the open road. And, and I, I tell you what, we have seen some things. We have absolutely seen some things um, yeah, that, I that I can't even describe on the road while driving. Steve, for those of us that can see the camera, Jared was standing on the back patio waving as if he thinks you're on there. <laughs> I, I did see him. And it, did you see him? I did see him. His little light blue shirt walking up and uh -huh. photobombing you. Yeah. This is a perfect segue because I was actually going to mention, ironically enough, him. Um, but Steve, last tournament talk, we had Jared um, with IOI Ventures on to chat with our tournament directors about you know, the marketing services that he provides. And when he does, I know you are, you know, uh, SMC Soccer is a partner with Jared's as well. Do you want to talk at all about, you know, that relationship and how it's helped you, whether in good times or COVID times or all these times and, and th that part of it? Yeah, he's helped me in no way, shape or form. Jared, um, <laughs> why is he here to hear this? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm sorry. He, he, it's been helpful. So, so, you know, obviously the world is changing and, mm -hmm. um, you know, we're the decision makers. You always ask yourself, who are the decision makers in business, marketing wise? And and you know, as as the ages are coming up, you know, I'm I'm 50, but as the ages are coming up, there's a whole different set of criteria for the different generations. Mm -hmm. You know, and you know, Jared's group coming in is really putting an emphasis on social media marketing. Uh, he's really put, putting a uh, you know having more data. Uh, through analytics and different things. So uh, not my specialty and not my strong point. Um, I, have an, I have an opinion, and, uh, but definitely he has come in and, and made me a lot more aware of what's going on. Uh, we've had to learn a lot, which is good. It's always good to stretch yourself. Mm -hmm. And uh, IOI has been a big part of that. And, and so we started pre-COVID uh, in February and then uh, right as it was hitting is when we started our contract with them. And here we are uh, moving forward. And they've been very helpful with us in, in developing, you know, a, a following, a website, uh, uh, connecting to all the different analytics so we can, we can figure out what we're doing and start to be more quantitative uh, mm -hmm. uh, and qualitative as to what we're doing. So it, it's been very helpful in that regards. Um, and, and Jared's company is exploding with people. I mean, it was what, like two or three, and now it's like 15. Yeah, it's growing people. quickly. So mm -hmm. um, despite Jared's mm -hmm. best efforts, the company's doing great. And, uh, <laughs> you know, I like to give them a hard time, but no, mm -hmm. IOI has been helpful. They've been helpful. Um, you know, it's this day and age, everybody wants stats. Mm -hmm. Uh, whether it's hotel stats and heads on beds or whether it's economic impact studies or whether it's uh, uh, your Google Analytics or uh, on your website, everybody wants stats. So it's very important to have those. I agree. Do you have any other partners in that same realm, uh, you know, that you've, that you've found that throughout COVID or even just as in a normal tournament year that you, as a tournament director, you can't live without? Um, there, there's no way I could have navigated this without a housing company a third party housing company. Um, and, and it's been, you know, sometimes my client, I, I have two different types of events. I have client-based events and I have events that I own. And the client-based events, I'm sometimes dictated to with regards to who my third party housing company is. Um, all in all, uh, um, this has been hard on them, I know, and it's been hard on us. But uh, uh, without a housing company, there's, there's no way, shape or form I could have done any of this. 
Uh, I, I would have rather just said, go find your own place and, and not had one if, if, if I had to deal with it, because yeah. there's no way I could have done it. Um, mm-hmm. and, and, you know, so it's been, a, it's been a nice stream of income as well to come in uh, when we do have it, but the numbers of, that's where I've seen the biggest dip in my company is more people don't want to stay in hotels. This was obviously bigger as we were closer to, you know, in 2020, it's getting better. Um, it's getting much better. We just broke the record at Sarasota Cup for uh, uh, room nights. But again, without a housing company, there's no way I could have done this. That's awesome. It's about all those partners, right? Everybody in it together and just willing to make it work. So, yeah, I'm not a guy that likes to, uh, uh, you know, go out and get three quotes and, and, you know, what can you do for me? And, and every year, you know, shift and, and change. I, I find somebody I like, I, I pretty much stick with them. Yeah. Um, I, I've had the same awards guy for the last uh, five years that I use. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and as long as people treat me right and provide good quality, I'm, I'm by your side. Yep. You're true to your core. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, it's nice. You know, my, my mission awards guy who I use, you know, he invites me up to go ice fishing and snowmobiling during the winter. And I haven't been able to make it yet, but man, that sounds like a lot of fun. Uh, I'm waiting for the uh, for Lucid Travel to invite us up for the, uh, uh, you know, the nice uh, New York, upstate New York Lake vacation. That is one of his places for during the summers. I mean, we'll just we'll just get a lake house in the Finger Lakes and do a whole summit. It'll be great, just hanging out. <laughs> Lucid. I'm in. Sweet. We were able to have a conversation at lunch last week. Steve and I and I asked him of all the places he travels because he's traveled a lot. Like, what are his favorite places? And upstate New York was one of the most beautiful places in the summer that he mentioned. And Steve, you went to Syracuse University. I did. Yeah. So he really that that shocked me. I was like, wait, wait, <laughs> what? what? This made the list because I think it's beautiful. It's where I'm from, and you know, whatever. But um. You, you forget how the actual beauty when you don't live there. So um, I was going to say, we're going to invite you down to um, the starfish company for <laughs> lunch. And then you went uh, upstate and totally just made me even happier. Yeah. Florida's nice during the winter. Amazing during the winter. Yeah. New York is fantastic during the summer. I can see why there's uh, a lot of snowbirds. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Well, do you have anything else you'd like to add to the call in any way, Steve? Um, not really. You know, it's just with, with uh, again, with my company, the, you got to enjoy what you do. And I have really good people around me. I have really good relationships with housing companies, with my awards guy, with, with uh, my clients. Um, my, my whole mantra is, is I want to sit back here 20 years from now, sit on a porch with a beer and, and say, hey, look what we did. And, and so not, I don't want it to be very transactional. You know, business is, doesn't need to be transactional. And so that's kind of how I've flowed and rolled. And, and, and it's really been a, a great six years with this company. Yep. I, I think you're doing it right. I, I we have a, a seat at the table, seeing what you do and, and witnessing it. And it's a pleasure to watch and be a part of and, and hopefully grow with. And um, you're definitely doing things the right way. And it shows. Well, thank you. So. Shan, do you want to see if anybody has any questions before we before sure, we end, sure. uh, I don't I'm know if anybody does, but what about it? It's always nice to see, just in case. No, I guess not. That's okay. I just always like to put it out there in case any tournament directors have any questions or thoughts or. Yeah, I don't have a question, but I, I do want to say that uh, I do enjoy these because it, you learn a lot by interacting with uh, other sports and what they're doing. And um, it's, it's nice to be able to hear. Uh, I mean, and we see the reality around us with the other sports, but it's nice to hear what's going on in the rest of the country 
and uh, how they were managing to make comebacks and so on. So I appreciate that. That's a good Thanks, thing. Marcy. Appreciate well, we you. Appreciate you coming on. You're like our. I feel like you're like our our number one fan right here. We <laughs> center, and I get so happy when you pop in. <laughs> well, so we we haven't been able to do any of our swimming events. Um, we were able to go to Virginia. Virginia is open, so we did have three girls that swim at a high level be able to go to Virginia. Um, it was. It was amazing, it was emotional, and it was difficult all at once. So yeah. um, it's it's very challenging right now, very challenging. I know, I know. Well, well thank you for- keep Hoping things are gonna open up and get better and get all your, your athletes back where they need to be. That's our goal. Well, thank you everyone who joined us today. Steve, thank you for, being so transparent and spending time with us. We really appreciate it. No problem. And drive safe. Tell Mark, I hope he has a great day driving and keeping you safe, getting you where you need to go. Understood. <laughs> Thank you. All Thanks, right. Steve. Thanks, Take Laura. Care. Thanks, Jen. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone.